Hey guys, Shoy here with another Hatchet Ice Scott in the Build video. Uh, before I get into it, I want to say that this build is not for everybody. And if you're looking to try it out, it's not easy to play. And I'm going to say that because you can get kited by ranged pretty easily. Um, and I've had a couple friends try this build out. And they, they typically say it's tough to get to ranged with this spec. So I can get away with that through really good dodging on really good iframes. But if you can't handle um, dodging like things like light attacks and heavy attacks just from the animation of someone shooting at you, you are definitely going to have a tough time playing this. For an example video, here I get caught in a rift and I am tomb. And as the player comes up to Ice Shower, I immediately burst out, I frame the Ice Shower, do my own dodge, put the Ice Shower on him, and start punishing. And I'm not going to show the entire duel, but I did win this one. Shoy. Shoy. This guy's playing... Oh. He's playing, um... What's it called? This guy's good. This guy's really good. You can tell by his movement. Yeah, this guy has great movement. Dude, that guy plays Ice Gauntlet Hatchet, and it's so cool. I, I have so much respect for that guy that plays Ice Gauntlet Hatchet and like seriously makes it work. Oh wow, there's a lot, pe a lot of people mid here, huh? Alright, let's jump into the perks for this. I take every useful hatchet perk, so Refreshing Torrent, Energizing Feral Rush, Keen Berserk, and that's it. Um, for the Ice Gauntlet perks, I take Healing Tomb, and that's it. For my ring, I take Hardy and Keen Awareness, and I'm working on getting a 600 gear score Smooth Bone Ring from Lazarus, so then I can get Leeching as well. For a necklace, you definitely want Divine and Health, pretty much on every single hatchet spec there is, because Divine affects the Berserk ticks, so you definitely want that. I'm running Regenerating, because I play in Heavy with 5 Resilient, so I've got a shit ton of health. I have more than 14k health, and that's still going up because I'm getting uh, better gear. For the Ice Gauntlet, I'm using Keenly Jagged, and I'll go over why a little bit later. For the hatchet, I'm still working on getting my best in slot, but that's ideally going to look like life stealing, keenly empowered, and something like vicious or enchanted. For attributes, I have tuner strength, and I don't put more into that due to diminishing returns. So after that tuner marker, you go into dexterity to get more out of your attributes. And I am a 50 dexter, and I could go more into this, but you know we're in heavy and we scale really good with constitution. So I'm putting more into that at the moment, especially because healing tomb and and tomb also scale off your max health, just like berserk, and the well-fed status and regenerating also scale off your max health. So this all scales pretty nicely. Um, so for weapon mastery, like I said, we are running keenly jagged on the ice gauntlet bar, and we mainly proc that through the usage of ice pylon. Um, some people don't like this ability, but I love this ability because every time someone attacks this, that's damage I'm not taking, and that's basically a free meat shield and free damage, and I can use that while I'm like trying to get to people, and that's typically how I use that. Um, if someone destroys it, it's got a short cooldown, and you can replace it to get some fortify, 
and if someone doesn't destroy it, it lasts a really long time now and we'll patch 1.2. And every time we cast ice abilities in ice areas, and it doesn't have to be our own either, it could be our allies, that improves our uptime for our other abilities too, like Entomb and Shower. Those are both really long cooldowns, but we can make those pretty short through the usage of this perk right here, Refreshing Frost. Uh, I don't run any intelligence, because I'm not trying to be an Ice Gauntlet main user. And Entomb and Shower don't even do any damage, so they don't even scale with intelligence. So this is why this build works. We want Keenly Jagged on the Ice Pylon, the Ice Gauntlet bar. Uh, because as long as you attack something that's got a little red marker, because Keenly Jagged does count as a debuff, you will do 15% more damage to any target, as long as they have a little red marker above them. And we also get 5% crit chance in the throwing tree with crit throw. And I don't take everything in the Berserker tree because I just don't have enough points. But Relentless Fury, you definitely want this one over accumulated power. Uh, heavy attacks can be a little bit inconvenient at times, but the difference between Relentless Fury and accumulated power is this 30% and power lasts for 4 attacks, where this one only lasts for 1. So the perfect chain in like an ideal scenario would be heavy attack with 3 consecutive light attacks to get 15% fortify, and then you end it with a heavy. So heavy, 3 lights, heavy. That's your perfect scenario if you have no abilities to use, and then you can get the most out of this, these perks. So I'm running an arcane gem at the moment, because in the onyx meta, like most people are running like full onyx gems, just because it's not the most damage you're taking at the moment is usually from bows, muskets, and melee people. So most people go full onyx, and to circumvent that I'm using an elemental gem. Um, and I'm using the arcane one for no particular reason really, you can use any kind you want. But the arcane one does more damage to corrupted, and that includes the gigantic brute in outpost rush that spawns all the meatballs that are fucking annoying. So arcane damage does more damage to the brute, cool fact. Um, if there's ever a meta where people are not really running a whole lot of onyx gems, then I'll definitely swap it out. But even... If I'm like killing someone in an ice shower and they're in full onyx and I've got a malachite so I'm fully procced, I will still do less damage than the arcane gem just because of the way resistances are right now for this meta. Um, if you want to see my build in action, please feel free to check out my last dueling video. I did not have healing tomb or cleansing tomb for that video, so I was a little bit nerfed. So. This build is even more powerful now, because I did get some gear upgrades. Uh, Cleansing Tomb was fixed in patch 1.2.2, and that's a huge boost. Cleansing Tomb is so good in my opinion. And no, this build is not dual specific. I use it in everything, so expeditions, wars, duels, whatever, outpost rush. Um, if I'm fighting in a war, I don't typically go on the flag. Because I don't have a shit ton of like hammer leeching abilities and stuns. I am more of a backline annoyance and ganker. It's really tough for mediocre and average players to get out of an ice shower. Um, especially when it's laggy. And this is great because it applies rend to any target. And it's really tough to get out of this, especially if you're not prepared for it. So most people aren't able to get out of an ice shower inside of a war situation. And if anyone focuses me, I typically don't really go down, because I'm super fucking tanky. And if they do, then that's less attention that's going towards the flag point, which is more important. So I'm a pretty good backline annoyance when it comes to wars. Well, alright, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys.